So uh, I dedicate these things now because that's funny for my team. So I'm going to dedicate this to Jed Rourke, who's the manager of the ROs, the ORO. Uh, he's a good cowboy and a good horseman, and I think if he catches any wind of me mentioning his name, it'll really embarrass the hell out of him, so that's why I'm doing it. So this one's dedicated to, to Jed. Uh, I'm going to catch this colt here. Several months ago, Cliff Shat was sitting right exactly where that camera is and, uh, and was watching me. And for any of you on the East Coast, I think Cliff calls his deal Alamar, Alamar Equine. And Cliff's a, a really good colt man, really good horse trainer all the way around in any discipline. Um, look him up if you got some young horses that need road. But anyway, he was passing through and he's sitting there and he was watching me catch some horses and use the circus pole. And he said, you know, it's funny if you call that a, if you call that a snubbing post, people say you got a lot of problem, a lot of holes in your program. And if you call it a single pillar, they think you're, uh, they think you're like Spanish riding school sophisticated. And uh, I call it a circus pole, so I guess that makes me a clown. But I'm just going to show everybody how I use this. Uh, I've seen these things my whole life. They were in every round corral I was ever around as a kid. Um, this isn't going to be John Wayne looking. This isn't going to be uh, Will James kind of stuff. Uh, it's just just a way to, that I can create some leverage and, and get that horse to kind of kind of come to me. And uh, it's just a handy dandy tool. This colt is not a, a like I say, a Will James Wild Bronco by any means. You can see that way he's standing there. I could probably walk up and catch him, uh, but I'm going to do this because it's it's going to put some tools in his toolbox that will help me later. Uh, we've got a good program here. These aren't these are are not wild broncos by any means. He had this horse would have had five days, and I'm not trying to pretend I remember him, but uh, when he got weaned at six months old, he would have spent five days with me handling him with this post so he's going to be pretty savvy to it but uh i'll just kind of shut up now and show everybody what i how i do this just kind of move him off we don't like to edit these videos if we can help it if you notice a cut in the video it's because i missed him 800 times and a guy could say well why didn't you just walk up and put that on him instead of roping him like that and scaring him? Well, I could have, but not all of them I can. This horse is, is pretty gentle. I'm gonna move him off. And I'm gonna use that post to help him, help him figure out this pull. He says, just catch me, we don't have to do this. Help him figure out how to give to it. And this is this is way, way quicker than it normally works. So just to help my team later on as we go here, I'm gonna put some more pressure on him with this flag. Because what I'm trying to do is is make sure I know he gives to this gives to the pull on this rope. So when I go to work on him, I can be real confident in what I do. There he gives to it. I'm not trying to sack him out. That's gonna come later. I'm trying to get him to move forward. There he gives to it. Now here in just a minute, he's gonna decide that this flag's no big deal, so I'm trying to time this also. I got him really given to that pull before I run out of stimulus with this flag, which is coming pretty quick. Yikes! See, he didn't know how to move his feet there. So I'm, I'm killing several birds with one stone. I'm desensitizing him slightly. I'm helping him learn how to move those feet. And I'm creating some give in him from an outside stimulus, which then when we get 
whether I ride him in a halter or a hackamore or a snaffle bed or five years from now when he's finally in a bridle. Hope it doesn't take me that long. He'll have something to go on about giving him that pressure. There he moves off. That's cool. You just moved your feet at all. That's what I wanted. See, he decided that he's not going to worry about this flag already. And I really don't feel like I got him given off of his neck quite yet, quite the way I want. But I'm going to take advantage, make hay while the sun shines. This isn't how I expected this to go quite this easy. But like I say, we make hay while the sun shines. Kind of got him sacked out a little bit there. Later on in the program when I'm haltering him or doing whatever else I do to, or hobbling him, pardon me, I'm gonna be a lot more confident about sticking my head down there in the danger zone. Well, you're a smart son of a gun. This, this Colt and the next one, they're both by the same sire. I've only rode a handful of them so far and they're kind of all like this. They'd rather, they'd rather get along and think it out. It's a really good ranch stud. Make him give to that pull. Kind of didn't do it the way I wanted. Make him give to that pull. There, he's trying to figure it out. So like I said, this colt, he oversimplified it for me to the point where it's kind of hard to get very much good footage out of something like this. I was saying it wasn't going to be John Wayne or Will James, but I was hoping for a little bit more John Wayne than what we got. So I could kind of show how I deal with these deals. But I guess that's, that's to say most of you that are watching this are never going to, never going to start one that's spent most of his life outside and only been handled a handful of times in his life. But if you, if you play your cards right, it can be this easy with one. And of course, genetics plays a big part in this. I'm not, I don't want anybody to think I'm claiming this is a wild Mustang, because he's definitely not. So he's kind of giving him that pull on his neck, he's giving him that pressure a little bit. I got a halter on him. I'm gonna pull him around a little bit and, uh, and make sure he's gonna give to the pressure on the back of his head and on his face before I tie him solid so he doesn't get in a wreck. There, and a lot of people, you know, they'll talk about, and I'm not saying anybody's wrong, they'll talk about using a lot of feel in a situation like this and giving the horse all the advantage, and they're right. But what I am saying is that here in just a second, I'm gonna go tie him to a post, and he hadn't been tied solid to a post in a year and a half. So I'm not being, I'm not using any finesse whatsoever. I'm just pulling on him to see if he'll pull back. If he does pull back, then I can do some work, do some finesse kind of stuff, get him back where I want him before I tie him to this post. But right now, I just wanna make sure I can tie him to a post and he's got, not gonna break his own neck off because I got several more of them just like him to catch. But I think he's gonna be copacetic. So I'll go tie him to a post. Mm -hmm.